Hello everyone, welcome back to Craft Aquatic, I'm Matt G. In this video, we'll be discussing what to do about a major unforeseen alkalinity swing, how to test often and consistently, some of the most important factors in maintaining a proper two-part dosing system, how to get to know your coral and use it as an indicator of fluctuating alkalinity levels, and how to slowly increase alkalinity in your system until it is back to your desired level. So in the process of planning the equipment overview video for the Craft Aquatic 120 gallon mixed reef, I was noticing that there were some changes in the coral. I have been dealing with some nitrate issues, but this is like a one to two day change where I'm just noticing that some of the, especially the Acropora little dollar, like this Hawkins Echinata, this PC rainbow is not, you're not seeing some of the deeper colors, some of the variety of colors that it can get. And then over here we have this uh, strawberry shortcake and underneath there's a pink lemonade and both of them are, you know, they could look a lot better. There's just this lack of depth in developed color. Paletta pink tip, mm, uh, tips aren't looking that pink and body uh, color is not looking that green. Green Slimer is doing okay, usually does. The LPS down here looking pretty meaty and good, like these Ganoporas, always looking nice, swinging in the, the current. And um, you can see in the background there, there's a nice chalice coral, definitely has some deep color. And to the left, there's a Samacora, that green Samacora, and that, that's a pretty sensitive coral, especially when it comes to magnesium. So I use that as a magnesium indicator coral. Invertebrates are doing well. So dying snails are typically an indicator of magnesium levels gone awry. The milk style is looking pretty good, uh, nice and, and uh, polypy. And this red dragon, yeah, looks pretty good too. I know it looks a little washed out uh, in this video, but it's actually a little deeper in color in real life. So overall I knew I had a problem and I had my suspicions that it was the alkalinity. I had not run a test yet, but um, in uh, inspecting underneath in the cabinet I noticed that there was some fluid down in the bottom of the cabinet and also this tube had come loose. This is actually the outflow of the dosing pump. So uh, first things first, I needed to solve this little issue. And one thing that happens is that these tubes get stretched out and uh, they come loose easily. So you want to snip them once in a while. I do like to use the silicon tubing versus rigid tubing because with the rigid tubing, you're usually adding uh, attachments to that. So there's just more parts to go wrong. And this doses directly into where my return pump is in the sump. And then here are the BRS space saver containers that hold the calcium, soda, ash, and mixture, and the carbon, which is Nopox by Red Sea. So here we go. We're, we're all hooked back up and um, hopefully good. And I'm going to go in and just start the pumps, prime them up, make sure that the peristaltic pumps are working properly and uh, actually pulling the fluid up into uh, the outflow of the system and then just kind of like observe that we have a couple drips happening here. The obvious next step is to test our alkalinity level. It's going to be low. We have not been dosing for at least a week. I'm typically at 8.5 um, and I'm just going to walk you through using the Salifer test kit. Everybody does it differently. The most important part is to do it consistently. Four milliliters into the syringe, right into the test vial, and then you're going to grab the cage indicator bottle and make sure that there's no drips on the outside because you want to make sure it's four actual drops going into the test vial not like one extra one that was just sitting on the outside. Give it a little, little, little stir. You don't really have to do much with this test kit. When you do this part, just do yourself a favor and make sure you're really gripping this bottle because if you spill this stuff, that's uh, an entire new test kit. Make sure that the point of this syringe is touching the bottom 
so that it's contacting liquid the whole time and you want to make sure that the bottom of that piston is all the way up to the one milliliter mark. That little air gap is normal. That's supposed to be there. And then put the top right back on that bottle. You do not want to spill that by an accident. So you can start adding the cage reagent quickly at first. You know you're going to have at least 20 drops before there is any reaction. But when you start getting close to uh, your lower end mark, especially since we have lost some alkalinity in the system, slow down and just give it a little drip at a time. You see the color change and then add one or two more drops until it's fully changed from that blue to the pink. And look at your number. Here we're at 0.6, just above 0.6. You got to look at the bottom of the cylinder. That's what correlates to the proper number. And then we're going to compare it to the scale that comes with the test kit. As you can see, 0.6 equals 6.1 dKH. So now we know that we are low because this tank is typically at 8.5. And here's a step you won't see in the instructions, adding the cage reagent back into the bottle so your test kit lasts a lot longer. Here we have my aquarium log. Uh, a week ago, alkalinity was at 8.5. Now we're at 6.1. That's a big problem. So I'm going to use the BRS reef calculator to define how many milliliters of solution I need to add to make up for what was lost over that week of no dosing. Results are in, 377 milliliters. We're gonna add this over the course of three weeks to get our levels back to around 8.5. Here's our aquaculture area in the basement. Video will be coming about this very soon. We always keep backup alkalinity, calcium, magnesium solution ready to go to um, implement in uh, situations like this when uh, things are not perfect. So I just filled that container up to 400 milliliters. I'm going to maintain our regular dose with the peristaltic pumps while uh, I'm treating the system. And the point is to bring the level back to norm slowly, very slowly, without shocking the system while still dosing your regular dose. So we start out with our 400 milliliters. I'm going to add 40 milliliters every other day, and I'm going to test uh, every four days just to make sure that this the levels aren't going up too quickly and obviously I will be observing the coral in the system as well as you can see now we're down to 360 there like many things reef aquarium this is a slow and methodical process bad things happen fast good things happen slow just take your time stick to the process and you'll get your alkalinity level right back where it needs to be good luck and happy reefing